what we've done, we've set up four stations. Mm -hmm. There's two up here and there's two across the way. Mm -hmm. And one of them is changing a tire. Not that you'll ever need to change a tire, <laughs> but you can at least have the knowledge and ask questions and see the process. Across the way, we've got in the upper bay, checking fluid levels. What the fluids are, where they're at, what you need to know, and how to check them. So again, ask questions. And um, we're gonna give you a lot of good information. Um, and next to it, down in the lower bay, is brakes. Brakes and noises, a lot of times you put the brakes on and you'll hear the noise or it'll feel funny or it'll shake or it might do something unusual. Well, we're gonna show you brake systems, um, the worn brake system, the components, what make up the brake system, how it works, and the warning signs. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanna talk about brake fluid for sure. Um, we got old brake fluid in this cup. You can see from there how dark it is. Doesn't look very good in comparison to like the new brake fluid. Pretty yellow, very clean. Uh, things that cause brake fluid to look that way. Excessive brake use, using the brakes on hill, boiling point. Brake fluid is a natural attraction to moisture. It pulls water to it. So, and that's one of the things that we do when we do our brake inspections and whatnot. We test the brake fluid with a moisture tester. And that will confirm how much moisture is in the brake fluid. Like this, this one here, it's all the way up to 4%. I mean, it, that brake fluid will cause core braking performance, um, excessive wear on the brake, pedal doesn't feel right. I almost rear-ended this car, it just doesn't want to stop. Brake fluid can be the major cause of that. On an average, most cars should probably have a brake fluid flux around 30,000 miles. Okay. With some people that could be very quick, and other people that could be months. Or months years. and months. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so in, in, that, in that aspect, I would say that would be more like once a year. Okay. If you're doing like a thousand miles a year. Kind of the same thing, you know, doing oil and stuff. With they kind of all cover that in a different station, but um, yeah, it's it, brake fluid is very, very important. <laughs> we have a few things. So, <laughs> this brake pad here, you can see the material. Mm -hmm. This is a wear indicator. Oh, okay. oh, okay. And this wear indicator here will start to drag on the rotor when you're applying the brake. Okay. And will make typically a high pitch squeak or squealing. Okay. Sometimes like maybe a skipping chatter sound. Um, if it's a continuous noise, obviously there's a concern. Right. Um, and that's what those are for. Um, I will say some cars don't have them. And some of the newer cars, they're actually a little electrical sensor. And when it contacts, it throws a light on in a bit. And it's just typically a brake light or an ABF type of light. Okay. Um, and we go in there with a scanner and we can see it's like brake light percentage, you know, and we, we still would tear the car down and visually see that to confirm that it's not a mistake or that, that can happen as well. Um, so these are all rotors. These are disc brake setup. So while I have a minute, I want to show you guys a little operation of the of drum brake. This is a brake drum. Completely different, completely different operation. Um, it uses a wheel cylinder component. Then when you apply your brake from the brake pedal, it pushes out on the shoe. And those shoes go outward into the drum and create the stopping and the, re the resistance. Um, little different, we got springs and hardware in there. Um, typically cars don't, the hardware typically doesn't just break and fail, but if they get a lot of miles on it, the springs are weak, won't pull the shoe back, can cause them to drag and make squeak. Checking the terminals and checking the, the, uh, the connection. So the terminal, so the top posts and the terminals. So what they will do here, they will actually will clean it with maybe a wire brush or a special, you know, tool that will, you know, clean the terminals completely. So that way you get all that grime and build up because you need to have pro a good contact on the cables. And then, of course, they will use this um, battery cleaning spray, which actually neutralizes any kind of, you know, the nasty buildup that comes from the carbon mm -hmm. or, the, or the corrosion buildup. 
So in that way, it makes sure it's, it's completely clean, you know, in a sense like, you know, iodine for, for batteries. <laughs> It'll clean anything up. Mm -hmm. So, and then when, it, when it's all said and done, when they're doing the cables back on, they will put this protect spray on, which is actually, you, you might see it's like that red, you know, like sticky, like, you know, syrupy or like, you know, um, jam kind of consistency. That will actually prevent any future buildup of corrosion on the batteries. The, the number one killer of the batteries is not necessarily the the, uh, the corrosion built up on the terminal itself. It's more of the corrosion that will build up in the cable. That's the killer right there because then now at that point you're preventing you know charge from the alternator coming or charge or the or the proper charge to your starter. So have your tires checked, you know, and your tire pressures checked at normal ser service intervals and once a month. It's the tires are probably like top three things for safety on your vehicle. Make sure that they're maintained properly. Um, and the last thing for that is um, your spare tires, like on pickup trucks, anything where they're underneath, like even on this PT Cruiser, this little spare is underneath. The service life of a tire is seven years. If your vehicle is more than seven years old, it's probably not a bad idea to have a new tire put on your spare. It can be the cheapest tire in the right size because the chances of you using it's pretty slim. But at seven years, you may put the spare on, get five miles down the road and that blows up because the tire is 10 years old. So in your owner's manual, they'll have specific jacking locations laid out. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. For your little screw jack, okay? This little device will pick up a big truck, okay? The mechanical advantage that these things offer is huge. So don't think that, you know, being somebody that's small, that you're not gonna be able to pick up your car because it's just a little jack. This will pick up almost any, any car, okay? Um, so in your owner's manual, you'll have the locations of the jack, the, the tire iron, um, several different styles of these, a few different styles of jacks. They're all a little different, but get that stuff out. Look at it. Get familiar with what it is and where it's at in your vehicle. Okay. And then they'll have a jacking location in your owner's manual. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you know where that is before you start this. If you start to pick up the vehicle in the wrong spot and you have a tire off, it could fall. You could seriously injure yourself, do a lot of damage to your car. Um, so you wanna make sure, which I wasn't in the right spot right there, that you're in the right spot. Um, and then you can just take your tire air and very, very easily start to lift a car up. It doesn't, it's not a lot of force. That's the point of these little jacks. Okay, super, super easy. So you don't want to take some weight off of the tire that's flat. Probably about like that. Then, you don't want to break these loops enough to where you can spin them with your fingers, but do not take them off. Okay, if, so, if the jack slips or the vehicle slips or a big truck goes by and the, and the car does one of these and it comes off the jack, you want the lug nuts on until the point where you're actually going to change the two tires. So leave them on, but loosen them enough where they can be spun by hand. And if these are really really tight you can put the lug wrench on here and put your foot on it and really really easily loosen them even on a big truck with a lot bigger lug nuts and they're tightened a lot more my eight-year-old daughter can undo lug nuts on my Chevy Tahoe with a lug wrench Okay, <laughs> and she's, I don't know, 60 pounds, <laughs> you know, the, it's, it's not hard to do um, as long as you're doing it the right way. So we got all these loosened up to where you can turn them with your fingers and then you're going to go back and spin this up until the tire is up 
off the ground is the biggest thing. And you may, depending on your spare, if you have a full size spare tire, or if you have a little donut like this vehicle has, um, you may have to adjust the height because this is going to be off the ground a little bit sooner than a, a tire the same size that's inflated. Um, so you may go to go put your spare on and it may not be at the right height. You may have to come back and, and raise the vehicle up a little bit. And if you drive a bigger vehicle that has a wheel and tire that's heavy and you can't pick it up, you can use the jack to lower the vehicle a little bit so that you can kind of just push it on. You don't necessarily have to pick the wheel and tire up off the ground. So once this is off the ground, okay, then we can take this. I'm going to cheat again for the sake of time. And spin these off. And these are all super loose. You can do this with your fingers. Now, it's off. This is a pretty typical sized wheel and tire for most cars. Um, and this weighs about 35 pounds. A little heavy, but not unmanageable. Okay? And this is the one that's flat, so just get it off. You don't have to be gentle with it. You're not going to hurt it. Then, gonna take your donut yeah yeah and again super super light um a bigger wheel and tire you can like i said you could raise the vehicle up or down you can also provided you're not wearing heels that might be really hard yeah you could um you kind of want to you could roll this up onto your foot and get your height that way okay but with a little guy like this you can usually just pick him up and once you get it in here close you line up the holes in the wheel with the wheel studs and push it on and you can hold it and you want to start the lug nuts going back on all the way until they touch the wheel you don't just want to put them on a little bit and, and call that good you want to go all the way down until they touch the wheel and you can do it this way too you put them on a little bit and then grab this because this is much faster and you just want to snug them up it's not a lot of of pressure no. Well, the tire's up off the ground. You don't need to, to go crazy tightening it. And what you want to do is once you get them all spun down, cheating again. Is you can tighten these as tight as, as you want to tighten them. They need to be tight. Over tighten them, you know, past what the manufacturer recommends, that's fine. Um, you're not going to hurt the wheel, the spare, you know, the spare wheel and tire, the lug nuts, the wheel studs. Tighten them up. Stand on this. And I'm about to show you that. I probably weigh close to 300 pounds, okay? You're not going to hurt these. Tighten them up. You don't want that coming back off, going back down the road. And if you're not comfortable with how tight you've gotten them, go to the nearest service station, any service station, and have them check them and make sure that they're tight. On a five lug nutted vehicle like this, you usually want to do like a star pattern, like you're drawing a star. Basically what you just preferred is to go to the furthest one away. So if you tightened this one first, the furthest one away would be either this one or this one. It doesn't matter. So you would go here, here, then to the furthest way again would be here, here, here. <clears throat> to tighten the wheel, to get the wheels perfectly flat against the, the mating surface, um, like I said, in the situation where you're on the side of the road putting on your spare, yes, you want to make sure that it's on and, and flat and tightened properly, but 
So you don't, that's gonna be the least of your concerns at that point. But it is something to be aware of to make sure that the tire is on the vehicle properly. I'll do the ground on this And then once everything's all tightened, you can come back and spin your jack back down until it's on the ground. You start with the car that's dead. Um, but if you're interested in, in knowing a little bit more about your, your own tire maintenance, this is a tread depth gauge. It'll tell you in 30 seconds what the wear is on your tire. Um, you can take the push the metal end out. They're all going to be the same type of design. Put it in the low area of your tread and push it down, and it'll give you a measurement in 30 seconds of an inch or millimeters. Um, at 330 seconds is when your tire is due for replacement. Um, every tire that's made and sold in the US has what's called a wear indicator, which is these little bars right here in between the deep areas of the tread. These little bars are 330 seconds tall. So if these little bars on your tires are flat with the rest of the tread, you're due for tires. Okay, that's the easiest way to tell. Um, or you can do the old, you don't want to get one of these. You can do, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this, the penny thing. You can take from the bottom of the penny to Lincoln's head is 330 seconds. So you could take this and put it in there and you could see it's right at the top of his head. You need tires. Power sphinx fluid, you know, you get a little bit of growling noise. Uh, that generally means you have a leak. Uh, yeah. so if you have a leak, that's when you're, that's when you're leaking. And uh, this one, you would want to, I usually, I like to drive the car several miles and uh, bring it back when it's hot. And there's a cold fill and a hot fill. And shut the car up on a level ground and you want to be at the hot fill. Yeah, that's when the fluid's expanded all the way. And, uh, and the fluid expands when it's hot. Yes. All right, guys, so the next one down is going to be brake fluid. Uh, brake fluid you will generally find, not generally, all the time, uh, right on the other side of your brake pedal. So on the engine side, this is probably one of the easiest ones to spot in. And uh, brake fluid will have a minimum and a maximum line as well. You always want to keep it to the maximum line. Uh, power steering, brand new power steering fluid looks like this, but nice and golden color. That's dirty power steering. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, engine oil. That's what the new one looks like. No. Depending on the different weight, um, they, they might vary a little bit of color, but that's about the normal en new engine oil. That's the dark, you know. Oh, yeah, to answer that question right now, it goes in right here. You pour it down the engine oil cap, so you take the oil cap off. Engine oil, yes. And you put it cold or hot? Cold. Cold. I like the cold because uh, fluids expand and it'll give you a false reading just by a little bit. I like, you know, engine oil, I like to have it like that. Um, maximum? Maximum. There's a minimum and a maximum. Yeah. Minimum is never good. So, um, and then coolant, there's different types of coolants too. Uh, this vehicle, they're nice enough to put a deck school on there. So we use deck school with distilled water. Yeah. You mix with water? Well, they have two kinds. They have, if you go to a parts store, they'll either have a 50 50 premix that you just, you know, open and pour in, or you can make a concentrate. You can mix your own. Uh, formula and then put it in too. Generally, I like to check fluids at least once a month. Um, just, you know, put on a level surface and uh, just go through the hoods and, you know, just check and make sure there's no leaks on the hood or any residue of anything, anything unusual going on, you know. New so. cars also? Yes. Don't the light indicators come on if something's For the maintenance reminder? Yeah. The maintenance reminder goes by uh, based on mileage and driving conditions. But if, if one of the fluids or above... Oh yeah, if your if the engine wa oil was way too low, uh -huh. it will tell you there's no oil in the engine. Um, some, you know, sometimes you, you get lucky. Yeah. Right, right. It's like the yeah. very you base minimum to a point where you might not be savable. Um, but cool they're always talking... 
in all the ads about the engine light coming on, would that, you know, on your car, would that be... A uh, check engine light is more of a drivability problem and a small related issue. Um, drivability as in if you have a misfire, if you have, you know, something that's emission related, um, for that the check engine light comes on. But check engine light and maintenance lights are two different items. They're not the same.